when I was asked about what would I talk about, um, I was turning around my head, well, what's, what message really do I want to get across to the people coming? And it was interesting listening above on the hill at the timber where there was questions coming from people and very valid questions and questions that was relevant to the individuals. So I thought, well, what is our role? What can Chagas Forestry Development Department do to help and assist people in getting the information uh, and putting them on the right track and indeed uh, providing information and, and education in managing and looking after their own woodlands. So that's the angle I'm taking at today. So particularly here we're on timber mobilization and timber being moved and for, and for some people here that are coming here today for the first time to talk about first thinning and get a bit of knowledge on first thinning. Remember thinning is a management tool. That's all it is. It's not there specifically to generate large income for you. It's a necessity, okay? If you can make break even on your thinning operation, and I mean by that is by covering the cost of your access, your road construction and so forth, it's a job well done. Because thereafter, you're on the get go from day one. So bear that in mind. You're not gonna get your Klondike on your first thinning, okay? So that's, that's very relevant. Subsequent, second and subsequent thinnings too are very important and a lot of people have got over the hurdle of their first thinning and now they think they're on the pig's back that it's plain sailing from here on in. It's not. Now you're coming into the value product in your wood, so now is the time for you to manage that. Okay? So that's where I'm trying to get lead in here that we're uh, an independent, as you're fairly aware, Chagas Advisors and Forestry Development Unit to assist you with making decisions and to give you the information for you to make decisions. Basically what we have in the general lead up to thinning, and this is in the first thinning context for people who are in at that stage and people who have gone through the process will be aware of it, <coughs> inspection paths. It is very important if you're selling your timber that you have access to your woodland. A buyer coming to look at your timber will want to get in to see it. You yourself getting through your plantation will want to get in and see it. How is your crop grown? What species are there? Because in reality, and I meet it regularly, a lot of people haven't set foot in their forest since the day they were planted. It's very, very important to get in. Measurements, measuring what, how many trees are grown, the grown stock, the volume, I alluded there today, the toss up between tonnage, volume, uh, weights. And again, it's, it's a myriad of stuff there, but measurement of heights of trees, of volumes of individual trees, and so on and so forth. And there are other measurements as well as you know, that. The application for the felling license, going through that process, what's required, the roading, What's required in that? The delays, the, 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 the dealing with the county councils and the planning permission and those issues as well. I mean, people are, some people, I'm talking to them, they're already sworn. They certainly have issues with that, and other people have gone, been through the process. Markets, very interestingly, we're relocated here in the Northeast. Our markets for small size material isn't as strong as it would be in the Midlands, for example, where you have a lot of sawmills or end users. So new markets are being generated up here, be it for wood energy, be it for local firewood markets, and that's good for the local, the local producers because you're cutting down on your transport costs. Why waste your money on diesel going down the road on a lorry when you can get 20, 30 kilometers close by? So all these are important. I'm going through this fairly quickly, but there's other issues as well. So from first thinning into second thinning and subsequent thinnings, you're trying to create a valuable product for your clear fill. And as most people here are, are farmers, are from farming background, you know you can produce a quality product. If you have a quality product, you'll sell a quality product. As John alluded to this morning, if you have a quality product, you'll sell a quality product. So you can look at the issues of their thin versus no thin. And that's very relevant because in this part of the country, we have good growth rates. You delay your thinning on Sitka spruce, you may not be able to thin. For a simple reason, it will not stand. These are other uh, issues that may be, may be things. So things like this are issues. There's also, of course, monetary uh, value here by non-thinning uh, your plantations as well. There can be a monetary loss. Our colleague in research, Dr. Niall Farley, has uh, information and a good stand inside. And Niall has done a lot of research on thinning versus no thinning and so forth and the different species. So it's worth giving him a, a chat on, uh, after this. 
And again, a new concept, relatively new to Ireland, is the whole concept of continuous cover forestry, because what some people have, the, have uh, issues with the whole uh, requirements to replant after their clear felt, and a continuous cover forestry basis, that necessity for replanting is, I won't say eliminated, but it is certainly uh, reduced. Now, there's a lot more I can talk about here, but time, I'll keep moving on, if you will. Just to give you, again, on the thin versus no thin, here is a, a trial that was carried out by a leash uh, owners group uh, where they did uh, research and they found that um, the blue stand at Clearfell is the assortment or the proportion of saw log versus other uh, assortment lots. You can see the blue at, at a Clearfell, you're nearly 98, 97% saw log. Uh, on tin stands, you can see the distribution then of the different categories. What the categories there are 7 to 13 is pulp, 14 to 20 uh, and in general is, is pallet, and then you're into saw log. And again, it speaks for itself there, the, the different assortments and the proportions of each category. So the tinning decisions, and there is a lot of decisions. Again, I'm, you bear with me, I'll go through this kind of a little bit rapidly in, in, in a bit of speed, but the decision to, to tin is a very important decision. What's happening and I'm finding is that people are coming, making the decision to tin on the payments of the grants, or of the premiums, I should say, sorry. And because it suddenly dawned in two years' time, my premium was up. I should start tinning. You're at year 18, Sidka Spruce, Cavan Monaghan Soils, you may have missed the boat, okay? Because there's a good lead into getting your tinner operations done. Anyone who's been through the process, you know how long it'll take to get every, your ducks in order to get this thing done. So just bear that in mind, okay? Um, your good decision, like every decision that you're gonna make in life and everything, information is key. You need information and help you to make the correct decision for your particular circumstance. So inventory and detailed forest site assessment is important. Now, again, most people here have no forest background uh, knowledge in their sense, but again, with a little help, and that's what I'm leading on to from Chagas, you can start looking at site factors and things, and it's a common sense approach to it. Don't go in with this is that it's, it's, it's a, it's, how would I say, it's a sort of an elitist thing that, that forestry is. It's not. Common sense gets you through a lot of it. Information on local conditions, weather conditions, uh, aspect of the ground, which way is it facing, roading conditions, is it the back boreens that you to travel up and down, things like that, local conditions. You're building up a big picture for yourself. Information on markets and prices. Prices will fluctuate different parts of the country, as I said, depending on your products you're producing, depending on the proximity to mills and end, end users. Your markets or new markets are developing from the traditional markets. Here to four, we only cut down to seven centimetres top diameter for pulp. It's gone beyond that. We're down, down to nearly the whole tops now for the wood energy market. So there is a lot of recovery from your, from your crops. These are all new markets that, that have only come on stream in the last five or six years. Things are changing. Managing history, performance of other local forests. The management history of your own site, if you have done previous thinnings, of other forests in your local neighbours, or members of a group that you may be attached to. How did their forests fare out? Are they in a similar situation to you? Go and have a look and go and talk to these people. And again, to get professional advice. There's professional foresters, uh, either individuals or with companies out there who will give prof professional <coughs> advice. And again, uh, Chagas advisors, we're impartial, we're independent, and of any of the, as I say, the companies or the, the consultants. And again, if you have a query or one explanation of it, that's what we're there for. So what, what, what we're doing, this now don't take what's up there looking across at the timber prices. You'll see it's 2016 and they're from Quilshin. And it's not idea here looking at a particular diameter gives you an average volume, gives you an average price. It's not that. That's not the message I'm trying to get across here. This is site specific for a particular plantation. Uh, each plantation will be different. It will be different depending on species, depending on growth rates, depending on ground conditions you get different diameter classes. But the idea through Chagas and through education and through getting the information is that if you have an understanding of your diameter, we can get an understanding of the volume of those trees and again we can lead on into how that value is, is uh, uh, worked out. One thing I'm finding is, and everyone here will have to think, what am I getting from a timber and what's it worth? Well, at the moment there are three price lists being produced uh, every time. One from the Irish Timber Growers Association, one from for the Irish 
Farmers Association and did one for Quilcher. This is Quilcher quarterly prices and you'll notice that the smaller ones aren't there, pulp wood, because they use that themselves. But pallet wood come on the market and so forth. So we need to get information on prices so that people have, a, a, have an idea. If you're in cattle, selling cattle, you go into the journal, you'll get your prices, or sheep, pigs, the prices are up there weekly. Now, so this is the thing I'll say, so thinning, it can seem like learning a whole new language, and to a certain extent it is. You've jarred on there, basal areas, tariff tables, yield classes, critical heights, DBHs, and so on and so on and so on. And these are, these are, these are words that people may not be, and probably are not familiar with. And the whole point I'm trying to make is that it's not as daunting as it may appear, okay? Through the help of Chagas, through advice and through education, we can help you understand that. We're not expecting everyone to go out and measure their woods and do all this work themselves. We're expecting people to be able, if they have a forester in working for them, to understand the language that that forester is talking to them on. Very briefly, one of the most valuable things you'll ever buy in, for your whole forest is a curtain tape. That costs 22 euro. It measures the diameter of our trees. We have people, that, for 22 euros, that's a lot of money. You're getting 510 euro a hectare on a premium. Surely you can buy a curtain tape worth 22 euro. And if actually if you all go over to one of the stands outside, I'd say do a deal for you. <laughs> anyway. But that is, that is a very valuable, look at what it is, it's a curtain, measuring, by measuring circumference we get the diameter, simply what it is. How can, ha I'm finishing up here, sorry lads, how can chalkers help? Short training courses, on timber measurement and other factors we can have short training courses right around the country. We have our permanent courses here in Bally Hayes and uh, myself and my colleague Marianne Lines were looking at the possibility of uh, running in a block release for a more in-depth timber measurement course here. We're looking at the possibility of maybe running that. Um, we have one-to-one -one clinics. We have a series of them throughout the year. We're running our next tranche of them in October, November, and December around the country in all the different areas. Again, they're specific, well, it's not specifically, it can be mainly aimed at afforestation, but certainly if any person has a, a harvesting issue, come into us. Site visits. We tried to get the site visits and specific site visits. Now, it can be difficult to get to everyone and I appreciate that. But it's worth, a picture pens a thousand words. If I'm walking the ground with someone outside, you can get a lot of information and give a lot of information on what you see. Field days, which we run, and events like today, the Talking Timber. Very, very important is owner groups, discussion groups, or people get together. There's no better way of you learning anything is talking to your neighbours, talking to like-minded people to get the message across. It's one of the most, I've found is one of the most valuable ways to do it. So it's well worth, worth getting in the group. Uh, and Chagas has produced loads of leaflets. They're fully available there. And indeed we have a very, very, very good website where a lot of information, my colleague Stephen has puts it up there regularly. And also just one of the groups that are involved here in the Northeast, they have their own web page, which they put up their information and, and it's open to anyone I'm sure they won't mind anyone that's not attached to the group going in on that site. But again, this is the spreading of the information with people. We also, of course, Stephen will tell you more about Twittering and that kind of stuff at a later stage. So basically, now, just other, very briefly, we've other tools and, 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 and uh, things to help you. Again, referring back to my colleague Niall Farley, Niall has got this tinning ready reckoner, which helps the person to sign when is their plantation ready for thinning. We also have stack measurement for low value produce roadside, pulp wood. Don't, you wouldn't use that for saw log or anything like that. Or indeed firewood, uh, tinnings from oak and so forth. So these are just some of them. This is something we've developed here and we're in the middle of upgrading it. A uh, very interesting story behind this. This basically is how anyone can find out how much volume is coming out in their first tin by taking some measurements themselves. And we, you could do the half day course just interpret some of the terminology within this, but it's very, very straightforward. Anything in blue, the owner inputs. We work out the mean DBH. We can, blue is the distance between five rows of trees. That's, that'll give me the number, 25 is the number of trees in our plot. It'll take, particularly this area, we have to take slope into consideration because of the drumming. Uh, it'll give us our stock, and the, the, the orange ones will turn them out, the, the answers for you. So at the end, you decide, what percentage are you taking out? That percentage will depend on your initial stocking, what types of trees are there, 
the title tree itself that is there, but it will turn out a very good estimate of the, the volume that should be removed in a thinning. Now, don't go jumping around the place with that end figure, because as John alluded to up there as well, a lot of timber can be left on site, where not a lot, but timber will be left on site because of machines getting bogged and so on and so forth. Net area, you take away 15% approximately of your, of, of your gross area, so as to get it. We're updating that to, to include tinning control, and we're also updating that for second and subsequent tinnings with built-in tinning control. So that's, and hopefully that will be ready this side of Christmas, and in discussions of making it available to, on our website or to our people. So that's something we've worked at for the last year or two. So, that's me finished. But my message to you is, is that if you feel that you're not getting the information or if you feel that this is getting very daunting, the whole forestry thing, it shouldn't be. There's people here in Chagas that will give you that independent free advice. Uh, as the man says, we're trying to sort of get you interested, get you, get you going. Anyone who turned up here today has, certainly has a gen an interest in it. But you must remember there's about seven people out there who haven't shown the same interest as you have. It's to get that timber moving, but more importantly, get it moving for you as the owner. Here's what's coming up in the next while. We have another one of these events in the Hurst and Jockey in Tipperary. If you know anyone down in that country, tell them to come along. We're at the plough match for the relevant dates. One specifically on Broadleys. It's down in Mitchellstown in County Cork. That's the where the rest of us can be found. And um, I can leave that up for a second. And she will, Tom. Huh? Right, thank you very much.